So with that, we'll move on to our next speaker, uh, who is um, from uh, Brazil's Central Bank of Brazil. Uh, and we have been working closely with uh, with with the Central Bank of Brazil. In fact, uh, our our uh, delegation we met uh, with uh, them in London at the at the Brazil Embassy uh, a couple of years ago when their uh, deputy governor came <coughs> to discuss uh, the recent developments. And I think at at that time they were uh, devising their um, a policy on. Um, on on fintech and crypto assets uh, etc and they were taking industries views so i myself i went down to london i am based in manchester where i'm i traveled down to london to meet with the deputy governor of central bank of brazil and uh, we had a very interesting discussion on how um and to listen to their perspective and to share uh, some of our work as well so um so the next um, next speaker is um, and Antonio uh, Antonio Guimarães, uh, who is from Central Bank of Brazil, and uh, he would uh, share his thoughts on um, what they are doing uh, and the current updates uh, from Brazil. Hello, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. Uh, about a topic that is increasingly uh, relevant, not just globally, but also in my country, Brazil, which is the regulation of crypto assets market. My name is Antonio Marcos Guimarães. I am a consultant in the financial system regulation department at the Central Bank of Brazil, where I coordinate the regulatory framework for crypto assets based on the Brazilian law 14478, in 2022. Before uh, we dive into today's discussion, I would like to extend uh, my gratitude to the British Blockchain Association for organizing this event and for inviting me to share insights on this important uh, subject. Well, first things first, uh, a relevant question before we start is why regulate the crypto asset market? Uh, well, the global movement towards regulating the crypto asset market, including Brazil, is driven by the rapid growth and adoption of those assets. Uh, according to recent data, Brazil ranks among the top countries in crypto assets adoption, uh, with millions of users engaging in trading and investment activities. This popularity brings benefits, such as increased financial innovation, however, it also introduces significant risks, particularly those related to financial stability, consumer protection, and the potential misuse of these assets for illicit activities such as money laundry and fraud. Uh, international incidents, uh, such as the collapse of a major crypto exchange like FTX, have highlighted vulnerabilities within the sector. Uh, these events demonstrate that while uh, underlying blockchain technology remains robust, issues often arise from, from poor governance, a lack of transparency, and inadequate uh, internal controls. As a result, uh, there is a pressing need for a regulatory framework that addresses these risks while allowing innovation to thrive. When we talk about uh, the regulation of crypto assets, we are not only referring to cryptocurrencies like, like Bitcoin or Ethereum, but also to the broader concept of asset tokenization. Tokenization involves uh, using blockchain technology to represent real world assets digitally. This could be anything from financial securities to real estate. The intersection between crypto assets and asset tokenization presents both opportunities and risks. Uh, on one hand, tokenization can enhance liquidity, improve transaction efficiency, and provide more transparency. On the other hand, it introduces risks such as liquidity mismatches, where the underlying assets liquidity may not match 
to that of its tokenized version. There is also uh, re uh, the risk of market manipulation, cybersecurity threats, and operational vulnerabilities stem from the reliance on third party service providers. The similarities in the technological foundation of crypto assets and tokenized assets imply that risks in one domain could easily spill over to the other, hence a coherent uh, regulatory approach is necessary to ensure that uh, these innovations do not compromise financial stability. Well, and what about the Central Bank of Brazil approach? At the Central Bank of Brazil, our approach to regulating the crypto assets market is grounded in caution and collaboration. The enactment of Law 14478 in December 2022 laid the foundation for the regulatory framework. We have already initiated a public consultation process posing 38 questions to gather feedback from market participants, industry, experts, and the public. This engagement is critical to ensure that the regulatory framework we developed is robust comprehensive and reflexive of the needs and concerns of our stakeholders. We plan to conduct, conduct a, a second public consultation in October 2024, uh, focusing on draft regulations. Uh, this interactive and consultative, consultative process will help us refine our regulatory approach and ensure it is both effective and practical. Our Regulatory strategy emphasizes technological neutrality, meaning we aim to regulate the uses and activities associated with the technology harder than the technology itself. By doing so, we can adapt uh, to future innovations without stifling uh, technological advancement. Our regulatory focus will be on ensuring transparency, accountability, and risk management particularly concerning custodial services, untimely money laundering protocols, and the solvency of service providers. The regulation of crypto process uh, market in Brazil is essential for several reasons. Firstly, it helps protect investors by setting standards for market conduct and ensuring that entities operating in this space have adequate risk management and transparency practices. Secondly, it's, it safeguards uh, the integrity of our financial system. By regulating crypto assets, uh, we can prevent their misuse for uh, illegal activities and ensure they do not pose a threat to financial stability. Thirdly, our uh, well regulated enhances trust and confidence, encouraging more institutional participation and fostering innovation in a secure and environment. In conclusion, uh, while the potential benefits of blockchain, crypto assets, and tokenization are immense, they must be accompanied by appropriate regulatory oversight and manage the associated risks. At the Central Bank of Brazil, we are committed to, to building a regulatory framework that do not only addresses these challenges, but also supports sustainable growth and innovation in the financial sector. By doing so, we can ensure that Brazil remains at the forefront of financial innovation, providing a secured and inclusive financial system for all. Thank you for your attention, and I look forward to further discussion on this important topic. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um... Antonio, that was an excellent talk. And you raised some really interesting points around the risks and benefits of, uh, of tokenizing financial instruments. Um, while on one hand, there is, there is transparency, uh, but on the other hand, obviously, it, in, it introduces some risks, uh, new risks, which we are uh, still learning about um, yesterday i was in uh, in edinburgh scotland and there was a talk on decentralization <clears throat> decentralization index 
which was quite uh, fascinating as we looked at um, how decentralized the decentralized technologies are and if um, we look at uh, the various um, the various projects and blockchain applications and blockchain use cases we talk about decentralization um, but the real question is what um, what is it that we are trying to achieve and in blockchain we have this long standing trilemma of uh, um, decentralization scalability uh, and security and it is often said that when you try to improve one you uh, risk of um, uh, making the other one less efficient um, so the real challenge now is how do we uh, ensure that we achieve this uh, kind of rather ideal uh, situation where you have uh, a decentralized uh, system which is also secure and which is also scalable uh, and decentralization has different um, is very dynamic it has different spectrums and uh, i suppose um, index is important uh, but we also need to look at uh, the privacy and the security 